coding made easy. So what's up, everybody, and welcome to the second part on on creating enemies. So what we left off, we left off with um, setting up the enemies update function or method, and now we're going to get into kind of drawing it and and stuff on the screen. So to start off the tutorial. What we want to do is in our load folder where we have our player and our menus, you want to just uh, create an enemy section. And I've I have this here. I load the image, the same image as the player image. Uh, you can have a different image if you want. This is the position, the direction, and uh, the range. Okay. So uh, that's the stuff I got set up, and it's up to you if you guys want to do that. Uh, yeah, the same as me or something different. So. Um, so once you've got that done, then you can continue on to this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our gameplay screen dot H and we are going to make another entity manager and we'll just call this enemies. Now we want to go to our entity manager dot CPP first. No, first we'll go to enemy entity manager dot H. We'll include the enemy class. And we'll go to entity manager.cpp. And right here, when we say if type is equal to player, we'll say else if type is equal to enemy, then entity is equal to new enemy. Okay, so that's all we've we've got to do for that. So we can close that. So now we're gonna go to our gameplay screen.cpp and we're gonna say enemy enemies dot load content load and whatever the text you called it so mine's enemy dot text nothing in here and the type is enemy and for unload content we'll just call enemies dot unload content uh, we'll call enemies dot update ev input and what we're going to do right here is we're going to cycle through our enemies call map update enemies dot entities i and yeah so this is going to check the updating for this is updating our players collision and this is going to be updating our enemies collision okay and last but not least we will just draw our enemies and we'll display it to the screen so if everything goes according to plan if we run this let's see what we get Sorry, it's taking a long time to compile. So as we see, we get absolutely no enemy. So there is something that we are doing wrong. So let's check this out. So if we go to enemy.cpp, everything seems fine. Uh, we load in the content. We have our counter. Let me check what's going on quickly. Okay, so it's a simple little thing that I missed. Minor error. I should have added the move speed to my text file. So let's set the move speed to one. And if I run this, Sorry. Let's run this one more time. Hopefully this this will fix the error. Okay. So as you can see, the the enemy is moving in the direction, but as you can see the player fell down. And why did the player fall? Well, if we look at our let's go to our tile.cpp. La 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 la. Sorry. Okay. 
So if we look at our tile dot update, what happens is that um, when we land on the tile, it'll say if it contains an entity, right? And if it contains an entity, then it will see that if it's touching it or not, blah, blah, blah. The thing is that if, uh, if, the, en if the enemy and the, uh, if the enemy has touched something and the player has touched or it contains the same tile, then what's going to do is it's going to say that tile con contains no entity, right? And therefore, it's going to activate the ga gravity, which is going to set our player to fall through. Now, the thing that kind of confuses me, though, is that when we run this, the enemy doesn't really touch the same tile as a player, but it still falls through. So I know there is something that I'm missing there, but I know the way to fix it anyways. So I'll show you how to fix that bug quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our tile.h and we're going to, in our private section, we're going to add in an integer called ID. And in our set content, we're going to add something called ID in there. So if we go to our set content, we're going to say this ID is equal to ID. And put an ID there. So if we go to layers.cpp, uh, in the load content at the top, we'll just put uh, ID set to zero. And we'll put the ID in there. And every single time that we add a tile, we'll add one to the tile ID. Okay, so we'll just add one to it. So every single time that, what we got to do now is we got to go to our entity.h, make a integer called tile id so now every single time we touch a tile we are going to say e dot tile id is equal to id so that means that we are on that tile so if it contains an entity and the e dot tile id is equal to the id of the tile we're on that means that enemy that means we're going to check if that enemy is still touching that tile and if it's not t still touching that tile then we will activate our gravity so if we run this Sorry, it's taking so long to compile. So I just started it and we started again. But as you can see, uh, we don't fall through and the collision works correctly as it should. Now, one thing, one last thing is that we want it. So if the enemy hits something, um, collides with something, it needs to change directions. Because if it doesn't, it's going to just keep trying to walk in that direction until it hits its range. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say that if they do a right collision, then we're going to say e dot direction is equal to enemy, no, entity, direction dot left. So we change the direction. And we'll say e dot direction is equal to entity, direction, right. And let's run this one last time. So as you can see, it hit the right side and then it changed directions. So that is it for this tutorial. So now we got enemies with collisions set up. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be setting up some entity collisions. So the player colliding with the enemy. And then we'll add in some moving platforms and stuff after that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye for now.